the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, I didn't want to fanboy out when I met you, but I'm a huge fan. Thank Just you to very let you know, much. I really love your music. Thank you I think very much. Dave Cross is the first guy who turned me on to you. I think, really? a, yeah. I don't remember how. I just remember him telling me about Exile and Guyville. Do you mean Mr. Show? Yeah. David yeah, Cross? Yeah, he's the one. Yeah. He was a big, Mr. Show was in my happiest touring iteration. Like, that was what we watched every night after the show. We'd hit the bus and everyone would watch Mr. Show till we passed out. That's a genius show. I think it's like for Bob, I mean, Bob did great on Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. And he's done a lot of other stuff that's awesome too. But there's a, something about the two of those guys together. Yeah. Very unusual combination. <laughs> and their writing is just so bizarre and weird. But they did a Netflix thing for a while. I don't know if they're, are they still doing that? Uh, Do you know? I think, so. I think he's doing those other shows now. I don't think so. Too bad. Anyway, hmm. Dave Cross introduced me to Liz Fair. So there well, you go. I am. That's a nice. That's a nice touchstone since it was part of my touring life. There you go. I feel very good about that. So you got. What do you have now? You have a box set out coming out. A <laughs> compilation. Is that what it we, is? Yeah, it's, it's kind of Maybe. like a. It's a reissue of my first record, Exile in Guyville, um, with the original Girly Sound tapes that I made on a four track in. God, late eighties, early nineties. Was that when you were living at home? Yeah, that was when I was recalled back from San Francisco, having not gotten a job and run out of money and grifted my way across like the Bay Area. Um, I mean, I had a place. We st we I was rooming. Everyone from my college class moved out to San Francisco, basically from Oberlin. So oh. I went too, and um, I made these little cassettes that I forwarded to two friends, and one of them got super busy making copies of these cassettes and sent them to every fanzine in America with this like glowing recommendation. And all of a sudden I was getting, I was living at home, um, still didn't have a job. And I would get these envelopes coming to me saying like, please make me a cassette copy, here's $10. And can you imagine what happened to the ten dollars? <laughs> like, how awful is that? I truly just like I was like, great, thanks. I thanks wasn't making bucks. like yeah, right. yeah. Like, there's about like a hundred people that didn't Damn. get their cassette, but I wasn't making the cassettes. But anyway, that's sort of Taiwan Yu is actually the person who made lots of cassettes and sent them around. So I wow. have him to thank. Did you have? A thought that you were going to eventually make it or be a big singer? Or did you, was that even an idea? Not a clue. That's I crazy. hated being in front of people. Like, I would not want to. I loved being in the studio, I loved recording, but I didn't. I was super stage frightened and I couldn't think of anything I'd rather do less than get up in front of people and play music or do anything. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. But it was you, hard. But yeah. you obviously have a love of music. I love playing music. I just, I get very self-conscious with a crowd. You got to pull this sucker up to you, otherwise we're not going to... I get very self-conscious in front of a crowd. Still? Not so much anymore. I yeah. do, about two weeks before I hit the stage, I will stop sleeping. And then... Really? Yeah, and I'll two work weeks. myself into this kind of cold sweat when I think about it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'll be like, can I leave the country? And then, <laughs> like, I get on stage and it all comes back to me and I'm like, I've done this a million times. This is the best job in the world. And wow. it just, it, I can't psych myself into that feeling until I'm actually on stage. Maybe that's just because you care about it so much. Probably. I'm yeah. too alert. We should be smoking those joints that are not we in can. that head. I no, have some over here. I'm no? can't even imagine where we'd go with that. We, we do it all the time. <laughs> if you want to do it, let me know. We're about 10 minutes in and you change your mind. Okay. Anytime. Let if me it know. gets really rough, if it gets really personal, maybe I'll... Like, yeah, sometimes you have to. You I'm, just, I'm a very awake person. Mm. Well, that's a good thing. 